tactical rifle that was just added to Cold War as well as Warzone. We'll talk a little bit about how to unlock it and whether or not it's worth using and what are a couple class setups that you can use now that I've done a little bit of damage testing, bullet velocity testing, and things along those lines. If you do enjoy the video, learn something new, please do me a favor, hit the like button. We are on the road to 1 million subscribers. We're getting very close. If you want to find your way back, double check, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on because we put out Warzone content on a regular basis. So there's three different ways you could pretty much do this. Four, I guess, technically, if you look at it that way. You can go to multiplayer. You need to get a double kill in 10 different matches. Problem with Cold War is if you don't like Cold War, don't own it, then that's not an option. But you have to stay out throughout the entire match. Double kills, relatively easy to get. Go Nuketown, get two kills, easy as that. But you have to play all 10 matches. Zombies, you need 250 long shots. You can actually go to the outbreak mode, get really far from zombies, approximately 50 plus meters, kill 250, and you'll be done with the challenge. Complete that with a tactical rifle. And a lot of people in the chat when I was streaming live over on Twitch, they said that one only took about an hour, which is actually faster than you're going to probably be able to do it in multiplayer uh, with all the loading and, and stuff like that, and faster than you're going to be able to do it in plunder. But we'll get to that as well. So that's it for the zombies. You do 250 long shots straightforward. Then the other option is you can do it in any of these modes. Um, but plunder is probably going to be your best bet. You go AFK. You kill a couple people at the end. You leave the match. That's going to be perfect world. Obviously, a lot of people are going to probably try to do that. So you got to hit the hot spot, storage, super, wherever else is a hot spot on plunder. You get your double kill. And double kill, literally, you have to be like kill, kill, like that quick. It's not kill, load down a player thirst them not no it needs to be kill kill so it has to be really fast or will not track it will say multi-kill or double kill on the screen and that's how you'll know you have to do that 10 different matches but when it comes to warzone you can literally back out and then you're good now what we'll do is go ahead and talk about some of the different various stats obviously the most thing that people want to know is how does the agency suppressor work how's the fire rate what is the damage that type of stuff we do have a couple different barrels in here Task Force says it's for bullet velocity, strafe speed, and effective damage range, which is cool. Titanium's for fire rate. Um, and then we have Strike Team, which says it helps effective damage range and bullet velocity. But as we know with these tactical rifles, they do not have a damage drop off. They do the same damage at five meters or 100 plus meters, um, which we'll talk about the damage profile right now. So anything when it comes to effective damage range is useless on the gun. It will not change anything on the gun. The, the main thing you really want to worry about is bullet velocity if you're going to be using it for range. And with the fast fire rate, this thing is actually practical up close. So we'll kind of give you a couple of different builds. But we'll, let's go ahead and talk about some of the stats. So here's the basic damage profile for the gun. It does 61 to the head, 37 to the chest, 36 to the stomach, and 34 to the limbs. Um, and if you put on the match grade, which says it increases damage... It uh, actually lowers your damage to the limbs, which makes no sense to me, but it is what it is. And this is reflective of the shots to kill for that, 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 that. So you can see pretty much regardless if you use either of those, you're not going to get really more damage and it's not going to lower the shots to kill. So it ends up being a waste. So next up is bullet velocity. And most people want to know this. The base carve has a bullet velocity of around 600 meters per second, which is pretty much in line with the most of the tactical rifles, the, the standard rifles in Cold War is usually around 600. If you put on the agency suppressor, you're going to get about a 25% increase to your bullet velocity. The strike team, it says it helps your bullet velocity and range. Um, but like I said, only bullet velocity matters and it does not change it. There's a zero net gain from the strike team. Task Force also says it helps with bullet velocity. It does not. Um, titanium, it doesn't say it does, but I still double checked and it does not. And then we have agency plus strike team, agency for task force. You're only getting the agency buff. There's no actual difference from using those barrels. So those barrels I would avoid using. But for whatever reason, the cavalry says it does increase vehicle damage. But it's doing the added buff that we had on LMGs back in the beginning. First season when the guns came out and the cavalry's for all of them. It's doing that same buff. But it doesn't add vehicle damage. It's still the same. We tested, like I said, everything I'm talking about, we tested live on stream over at Twitch. We did private match. We did regular plunder. We, we did, you know, just all this. It was all live. So if you want to check that out, you can check out the VOD to see how we tested everything. Um, cavalry, about a 29% difference, give or take. Um, and then with the agency press cavalry, right around 53 when you combine them together. So combined, probably around 50% which gives you a max bullet velocity of 930 with the cavalry and the agency suppressor without 
that the max you're going to be able to get is 760 which is the agency and then none of the other barrels are helping out that bullet velocity so that brings us to the fire rate you can fire 30 rounds in about three and a half seconds there and it gives you a, a standard rate of fire of 527 there is a burst delay of 200 milliseconds so the actual burst the three bullets when they come out comes out around 1150 rpm um without the titanium with the titanium it comes out at around 1280 uh, which is increasing your overall rate of fire by about 5%, um, but the actual burst comes out at about 10%, 11% faster. And then we also have this. So from zero meters plus, so basically to infinity, it always does the same damage that we just talked about earlier, and it always reflective of the same number of shots to kill. With this, you can run the cavalry and the agency to get a max bullet velocity of 930, and the standard rate of fire is 527, factored in just flat based off your fire bullets, how long does it take to fire? You're good to go. So five shots gives you a TTK of 455, which is pretty insane. You only need three headshots to make that happen. I say only, but basically more than half of your shots have to be headshots to get that TTK. So it's not really practical. Six shots to kill, pretty practical. Two headshots. And if you just land body shots, it ends up with a 683 TTK. Overall, this TTK is not special. It's not spectacular. The gun really shines when you get a two burst kill. And that's really what made the um, AUG and the M16 so nasty is you can hit them at range and it had no damage drop off. If you manage to tag people at range, this gun has significantly more bullet spread. I would still probably rather use the M16 um, in terms of recoil at range. But within about 70 meters, this thing is pretty easy to use because you can fire a lot faster than you could those other guns. So when we factor in the titanium, it changes the TTK a little bit because, again, like we said, it's 5% faster. So one thing I also wanted to go ahead and show off a little bit is for you to consider this particular aspect right here. This is the rate of fire of that three-round burst, and then we have a 20 or 200 millisecond delay between bursts. Five shots would be two bursts, so we'd have burst one, then there'd be a delay, and then there'd be burst two, and two shots would land. Uh, but like I said, that would require three headshots. If you manage to burst, get one headshot in the mix, burst, get another headshot in the mix, be six shots to kill, um, the TTK ends up being closer to 459. At the end of the day, it's not a huge difference, um, but it's not going to be 543. Like, there's only one burst delay in there, so it ends up maximizing your TTK is going to be faster than what the flat average says right here of 543 because there's only one burst delay and you're getting the maximum rate of fire. Same thing with here. You do it across, you can get some insane nutty rate of fire. But keep in mind that if you don't get six shots to kill, it means it's going to be seven. And this TTK is pretty slow. So it's very unforgiving. It's a high skill weapon. You need two headshots in the mix or it's nothing special. Uh, but it can delete. So you got to take that as you will. All right. So there's going to be a couple different builds for the weapon. The state straightforward one that most people will use for range. You got to use the cavalry. Like we said, none of these do anything um, except for titanium. They does rate of fire. Match grade does not help. So you'd probably go with the cavalry just to get the maximum bullet velocity. Keep in mind, it's the, there's no way to increase the vehicle damage on this thing. Um, then you would probably go with the regular 45 round drum mech. Um, so you don't slow yourself down too much. And then you could go with the SUSAT if you want to go that route. Um, or you can go with the 3X. That's Most people go with the 3X because it has a better ADS speed. The SUSAT, no visual recoil. It'll be a little bit easier to hit your shots. But it's kind of one of those things. Um, so let's go the 3X that route. And then the last thing you can equip, just so you get a little more consistency at range, is the field agent foregrip. This is the standard long range build most likely that most people will use. Maybe you trade out one thing or another depending on how your play style is, but generally that's gonna be the go-to. You're gonna be a little more aggro. You'll probably get rid of the agency silencer. You'll probably put on the titanium so you get a faster rate of fire. You'll probably still keep the field agent grip so you can use this at medium range as like a sniper support. Still use a 45 round drum mag. Uh, and then what you would do is get rid of the optic. You'd put on like the serpent wrap so you get faster ADS. Um, and then you would put on something for the strafe speed. Probably this last one, which would be the Raider stock. I don't have it unlocked yet. They keep it all the way at the highest level for a reason. Um, but starters, I would put a combat stock on. And then you'd use this for strafe speed. And this is how you'd get in and out of gunfights. If you wanted the extra bullet velocity, you'd probably get rid of the field agent grip. And then you'd put on agency suppressor. And then you get your silencer with bullet velocity, faster fire rate, the ammo. And then just be aware that maybe you need a mount up more often if you're going to be challenging people at range because the spread's going to be a little bit further. It doesn't kick an insane amount, 
So that's kind of how it goes. So overall, I think the weapon is pretty viable, very unforgiving if you miss any of your burst, um, but it could be a little bit fun, just kind of mix it up. I, at the end of the day, Amax is still number one. Um, that's not changing until that gets nerfed. Close range, Cold War rifle meta is still a thing, and this kind of takes advantage of a little bit of that mobility. So let me know what you guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, learned something new, please do me a favor, hit the like button. If you're brand new, want to find your way back, double check, make sure you subscribe with notifications on. Appreciate all support. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.